One, two, three. We, we bought, bought a car, car in Germany! Germany. <laughs> we like to be cheesy. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah of MyMerryMessyLife.com and this is... Hey, I'm Kevin. <laughs> my husband and we are a family of six with cat. four kids and a cat. And a cat. <clears throat> I hadn't even said the cat, the kids part yet and he's already <laughs> talking about the cat. <sighs> <laughs> All of you guys who follow our videos regularly are gonna love that part. He likes the cat more than the kids. Is that the case? Uh, I, uh, no. No. <laughs> no. The kids like the cat better than everything. The kids like the cat better than everyone else. This is true. Yes. <laughs> if you have just joined us and this is your first video you've seen of us, you'll be like, why the heck are they talking about their cat? Well, if you've seen all our other videos, you'll know why. You can go back and watch some of them. <laughs> but for now, we have four kids and a cat and we moved to Germany from America in February of 2021 and we've been sharing our journey and progress and everything that's been going on in our lives to make this humongous move and it was humongous and Indeed. hard and difficult but also amazing so yeah so we just bought a car what two weeks ago something like that lost track and I say we but Kevin did it all <laughs> he did all of it every last bit of it well, except that I, I gave, of course I gave w good wifely input. Uh, no, honey, that car won't work. <laughs> no, it needs to be a different color. No, I didn't. I actually didn't pick the color, but um, you know, I had to do my wifely duty and say which car he should be buying, right? Because it had to fit. And so Kevin will get into that. I'll let you tell all that. Sure. But for those of you who don't know, we've been living in Germany for two and a half months now. We're, we're now we've been here for three months, but at two and a half months, we bought the car. Right. Up until that point, we had no car. We were getting around by train, bicycle, and foot. It was the good old fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not like we live in the middle of a big city. Yeah, we live in the countryside. Right. But so, that's what's amazing. It worked. Yeah. And it was, you know, we had to lift up uh, all the groceries up the hill uh, all the and time. And I still do that, even still though we that. have a car. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been cool. Yeah, we've had a very active lifestyle, which we like, and we're gonna continue, and we only use the car about once a week on the weekends anyway. Yeah. So we're still being very active, going back and forth to town, to the grocery store, to the bakery, to the butcher, um, and everything, and going to see friends. It's all by foot and bike still, sometimes stroller for <laughs> Ella. For any of those of you, especially Americans, who wanna move to Germany or maybe move to another country in Europe, for sure, you can live at the beginning with no car. So if you're not able to work out the details of your car and you're sort of freaking out, hmm. I think in general, you know, even in the countryside of Germany, you can live with a car. We know because we've done it for two and a half months. And when Kevin finally got the car, I was like, okay, that's, that's <laughs> nice. But we had been living so long without one that it was so weird. I didn't really care that he'd even gotten one. Right. But now that we've used it, and we've been able to go travel more. Yeah, go visit friends in other towns and stuff. And go see other towns like Aschau, um, Kingau, and Prien, um, Kinsey, and I know I'm not saying those right, I'm sure. <laughs> We're gonna get a ton of comments below. Here's how you pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so I guess I'll just like, you take it away now okay. because I don't have much more to say. <laughs> well, I'll just sit here. <laughs> no, it was, it was a really, you know, I'd put off buying the car cause we were doing okay without one. Um, and it was a pretty, you know, pretty serious purchase and, and process. Um, but it did it and did it all in German. I'm really proud. Uh, it worked out. Uh, it was, it was tough, but it was uh, rewarding. Um, you know, when we were in the States, we had two cars. Um, I drove around a beat up old, uh, Corolla, Toyota Corolla. Sarah, you never liked that car. It was not fancy enough. I hated that yeah. car. Um, and we had a Kia Sedona, which is a good it was size, so old. had a good size, uh, minivan, uh, you know, for, nice for the car. kids. It was a nice car and car. we got that one. It had heated seats. I picked and, out that car. Yeah, Sarah picked That's out that car. That's why I liked it. <laughs> she, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, so of course we don't need two cars here. Um, and we were looking and trying to find what kind of car to get. Now I want, I really wanted to get a German car. Um, I, you know, I just thought it was cool if we we're going to be in Germany, we should have a German car. Which so. is how we deal with everything here. <laughs> yeah. We want German beer. We want German meat. We want German food. We yeah, want, like we in the grocery store, I try to buy stuff that say it's grown in Deutschland. And yeah, not, right. 
somewhere else. So, you know, I, I wanted, it turned, you know, we could have gotten, there was a Ford minivan. I'm like, I'm not buying a Ford. We just left America. Let's get a German car. You don't buy Fords even in America. <laughs> Well, I mean, people the buy van. them, but they're not good. Not the minivan, usually. Yeah. The trucks, usually. Yeah, the good. trucks. People like. Um, you know, so we're trying to figure out what kind of car to get. You know, then I, I was just looking around trying to find cars, and I promised Sarah that we were going to get something nice, you know, because, you know, she had liked uh, the old minivan we had. The BMW has a seven seater, uh, the Grand Tour. I, I used um, Auto Scout 24. I don't and know. And I liked that car, by the way, when you yeah, showed it, it to me. Yeah, it was a very pretty I car. I said, okay. Really cool you car. You did a great job, babe, because he, he did a ton of research. <laughs> yeah. You did a lot of research on trying to figure out which car would be and, good. And I didn't imagine, I was surprised that BMW was in our price range, which I was kind of surprised. So we were looking for all the cars on Auto Scout 24. And I don't know if Imo Scout 24 is the same company, but it feels sort of like the same experience. Oh, um, and it's really, really helpful. And uh, like one of the things I loved about the Auto Scout 24, it had like every car, it would say whether it was a good a good deal or a so-so deal or a bad deal. And I'm not exactly sure how they calculate that based on the number of kilometers that are on it or all the features, but I thought that was really cool. And it was an easy way to find all the cars. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of like a, uh, a chicken and the egg problem. You know, if you're gonna go and buy a car, it kind of helps to have a car to go look at cars <laughs> before you're gonna <laughs> buy one. And so, uh, you know, I found uh, some of these Grand Tours uh, in Ebersburg, I think it was, uh, and uh, I needed to take the train to go there. And so- Because we didn't have a car. Because we didn't have a car. So I'll cut here, and you can see a little bit of me uh, heading out to go see that car. Uh, and so when I get there and I'm looking at the car, yes, it has seven seats, but the trunk is the seven seats. And like you put the third row seats down and there's not full leg room, you know, for a full adult, you know, would have their knees up in their, up in their chin and there was no space in the trunk. And so I'm calling Sarah and showing it to her in a WhatsApp video and she's like, I don't know. I was like, no, this does not feel right. I think it sounds too small. We're getting a car so that we can travel with it. Like we're wanting to travel. We can go in a lot of places all over Europe because you know, the countries are like, in, in Europe or like the States in America, you can drive from Georgia to Alabama. You could drive well, from heck, Germany to Austria. You we can, can see Austria on a clear here. day. You yeah. can see Austria <laughs> <Yeah>. from here. <laughs> you can drive from Germany to Italy and to France and to Poland. And, you know, everything's close by here. And of course, we, there's so many places we want to see in Germany. And um, yeah, so it's just like we're buying this car so that we can travel with it. It's got to have plenty of space for all of us to ride in it plus our luggage. So yeah. I was just like, I was so upset that this car wasn't the right car because I really it, wanted it. Yeah, it was really nice, nice car. But anyway, so so then we decided, well, I had to look different cars, um, starting to look at the VWs. Uh, they're, you know, more reasonably priced, but still seem to be really good cars. And so there's like the, um, there's the Touron and the Sharon and the Multivan and we were sort of look, trying to figure out which size. And a lot of people around here have the Multivan. There's a lot of Multivans around here. It's amazing. Like I know there was some <laughs> thread in some Facebook group I'm in of Americans asking if they should bring over their like Chrysler minivan if anyone in Germany drives minivans. And I'm like, here there's so many, maybe because we live in the countryside yeah, so there's know. bigger families or I don't know, but there's <laughs> You see like these you know, little mamas driving these like giant VW bus like vans. Yeah. <laughs> and ours is not nearly that big. No, so we settled sort of, I don't know, if you can call the Sharon in the middle, I mean, it's still a pretty big car. Yeah. It has, you know, seven full seats that, you know, an adult can sit in all, all, all seven mm -hmm. of the seats. And then has, the trunk space is a little smaller than what we had in the Sedona, um, but you can still fit a couple bags or something back there. Um, so I think that was a good balance. Uh, so we went with that. So I found some Sharon's and actually some of them weren't so far away. We could even ride our bikes to go to the car dealership. So we can cut here and you can see a little bit of me and Grayson. What are you guys going to go do? We're going to go get a new car. Yes. After two and a half months of having no car. Yep. We'll finally be free. we we'll go for a road trip. Yeah. We're going to go for a road trip after we get back. Yeah. Yeah, we plan on driving into the mountains right after you get the car, right? Yeah. Sure. Get some takeout for dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you come back, we will have a car. Yes. So exciting. Have fun, guys. We will. Bye. 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 Bye.
was actually on his birthday when we went yeah. to go look at the car and he's like he wanted to go on a he car wanted to go. he wanted to go on a bike ride together. It's like, hey, well let's go the bike ride and we'll go check out the car. And Grayson is the son you saw in our last video. Um, he said seen, he said ten, and so many of you commented that his German was impeccable. Uh, just this is a total side note, but I just want to thank you for your comments on Grayson's German because he is out of all of us, he has worked the hardest on yeah. learning German. He and has. he's very proud of his German skills and he speaks very well now like yeah it's impressive uh, he's doing great he's doing very well <laughs> so um we're proud of him but i was so happy to get to share your nice comments with him so thank you for your very kind comments yeah so we headed down uh to go to the car dealership and you know in america it's like there's this stereotype of the the used car salesman is like this sleazy guy that is always mm -hmm. trying to take you for money. He's take and, your money. And, and you know, I don't know, here I felt it was a lower stress environment, although in America it's getting better. There's more and more yeah, car dealerships that are, are trying sick to... Yeah, tired of it. Yeah. Americans so, are tired of being fleeced. It ha by, has by been them. getting better in the States, but I felt yeah. like here it was a very low stress environment. Yeah. When I went to Eversburg, the guy's like, take as much time as you want, whatever. Yeah, there was no, you felt no pressure. No, no to pressure. To buy anything. And I'll tell you, the, yeah. guy, the, the folks at this car dealership were so nice. The guy that took care of me mm. was a young guy, probably in his 20s. He was a real young guy. Oh, wow. Super, super nice, super kind. I used kind. to think that was old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so nice and so kind with me, very patient. Um, you know, my, my, with my little baby two-year-old German. Um, and uh, But it was, it was just a really good experience. And, and you did the whole thing in German. Did the whole thing in German. You didn't speak any English. No English at all. So I couldn't I, believe that when you came home and said yeah. you literally bought a car. And at first I was like excited. I was like, oh, good job. You, you bought a car in German. And then I was like, oh, yeah. crap. You did bought you a miss, car in did German. Did you miss something? <laughs> did you miss something important? Yeah. Are you sure you signed all the papers? <laughs> like, uh, what does it say in the contract? <laughs> oh, no. But I mean, what they, have we done? I, I don't know if it's typical, but they took care of everything. They applied for the tag. Um, they helped me out with the insurance. Um, actually, it was in the end was a VW branded insurance. So I don't know. Maybe they're oh. maybe they're happy to have me do the insurance with them. Um, you know, and they helped. They did everything, and it was really cool. You know, we. We, I saw the car. Sarah was was happy and settled on it that it felt yeah, felt right. Knew it was the and right car. and so I looked at it, took it for a little test drive, and uh, which by the way I hadn't driven a stick shift for I don't know how many years. So Twelve that was years. I yeah. think you haven't driven a stick shift. <laughs> so it was fun, you know. And, and it was so I signed signed the papers that we we're going to buy it that day, and. Uh, you know, the guy is so, so kind. I mean, I don't know how he knew to deal with someone that didn't speak very much German. Like, you know, he's like, okay, well, we'll sign this now and then you have to transfer over the money and we have to figure out the insurance stuff. Um, and then next week, you know, you'll come back and you can pick up the car. And, and But he would like pull out his, his, his day book and his little calendar and he'd be like pointing there, you know, these uh -huh. are the days of when you can come. He was really trying to help. He was really, really did a good job. And it was really funny. One time when he was trying to ask, he was trying to ask me whose name should go on the title of the car. And I didn't understand the name. I didn't understand what he was talking about. And so he took out, you know, he took out an example title of a car and was pointing at it. It's like, you uh -huh. know, whatever. And I understood just talking about what name, but I was so confused and because it was somebody else's name on the title because mm. the dealership's name there is. And, and he's like, whose name? And I was like, well, my name, you know, my name. And then finally, after we were done with that, like then was finally the light bulb went off in my head. Oh, he's asking for the title. But I mean, he would do things like that and pointing and helping me. And it was just a really, really cool experience. He was so kind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and afterwards, when I went and picked up the car, he, he, he said that he's gonna send me an email to do a little um, review of, of him and, and his work. And, and for the, I guess it was for the Auto Scout 24 or for one of the other websites or something. But I was very happy to give him a great review because he was really yeah. really helpful and we've had that experience with a lot of official business um with doing our visas yeah um they were very nice and it was very easy and i, I think mean, a lot of that small town life though you know if we're in yeah, the big city that. it might they be said more if we hustle were doing bustle. it in munich it would be a lot tougher they might be like kind of grumpier <laughs> um but yeah so if you're i don't know I, we we could really over and over and over again recommend german small town life <laughs> yeah at least for us it's worked out really it's worked well. out great yeah and so when I went to go pick up the car, you know, again, he was so trying to keep things really simple. And he's like, this document goes in the car. This document 
does not go in the car. You know, very simple, you know, im auto, nicht im auto. <laughs> And, you know, so to make sure that the title doesn't go in the car and, you know, my uh, my inspection report does go in the car and my registration goes in the car and the insurance, you know, and, and, but it was just really funny. You know, he knew how to, you know, dumb it down for me that I really understood and felt comfortable with everything. So it was it was really nice. With the insurance, I don't know, maybe you guys can, can help me out. I sort of figured, well, they can settle the insurance for me. I'll go ahead and go with it and we'll see, you know, see how we like it and see what the price is because I didn't really know how to compare things. And so yeah. one of the things I had read online that I was already prepared for is that I had a letter from our old insurance company to give to them. If you don't have any prior record of insurance, then your rates are really high. And so right. at least I had at least I had that letter to get me something. In the end I got I have the liability insurance and then I have the full comprehensive insurance and then the animal damage insurance. And then I guess my deductible is 500 euros, you know, if I was in an accident. Um, and we're paying 163 euros a month, which is about mm -hmm. what we were paying for insurance in America. So I don't really have much of a benchmark for that. So I don't know. I figured, well, we'll go with what they can give me. It was easy, they could take care of it. And I'll do some research right. now and maybe you guys can let us know, let us know if, if that sounds like a reasonable decision. Did we make issue. the wrong decision? <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah, right. I know you guys will help us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We ask for it a lot oh, of times. Well, but I mean, it, it's so useful. I mean, we've learned so many things from from you all. And it's like yes. it's like we have a hundred hundred different mm -hmm. friends yeah. everywhere that are I always, know. you know, looking out for us. So uh, so that's really I cool. Know. Kevin actually has been recognized twice in public. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, aren't you the guy I've seen on YouTube? <laughs> so we're like, oh my gosh, we can't, we can't believe this is happening. Like, yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, and and I'm total side note, but if w once we start traveling, well, maybe it is related. Once we start traveling with our car more and more, now that hotels and restaurants are going to start opening up again, I'm going to be posting on Instagram. If you don't already follow us on Instagram. You can follow us at my Mary Mussy Life, all one word. And I will be posting in our stories. What I thought I would do is post and say, hey, we're going to such and such town. Does anybody live there? Would you like to meet up? You know, which cafe, which which uh, beer garden, What's which the best restaurant, local place? which park? <laughs> yeah, we would like to meet you. Yeah, in be other fun. words. Yeah, so now that we have our car, we can start meeting <laughs> some of you. And we thought that would be a lot of fun to make contact with with those of you who have been helping us out so much. So in the end, I paid the full sticker price. And again, I'm not sure. I, I talked with some friends and they said that it wasn't so typical to negotiate the price on a car. In America, it's almost like it, it's expected. You have to negotiate on the price. Well, generally, that's changing some too. Yeah, um, except for places like CarMax or... Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I paid the full price. You know, one of my friends had said that maybe you know, uh, this was a pretty new car, it's a 2018, and he's like, if it's a new car and they've done the inspection, there's not like anything you can harp on to say, oh, well, this is not very good, so maybe you should knock off the price. He said that maybe if it was an older car, there might be some room to negotiate, so I don't know. Did I did I get taken there by not negotiating the price? Uh, I uh, hope not. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid for the comments. <laughs> I hope our money didn't get taken. Yeah. Oh, well. Now, uh, we have our American driver's licenses, but they're only gonna work for us for six months in Germany. Um, so we've got to figure- uh, Three months left. I have three months yeah, left. Yeah, we got three months left. Now, I luckily have my old, uh, my old French driver's license. I was luckily able to trade in my, uh, trade in my American license uh, for a French driver's license. And it's, it's the old, these old ones, it's, it's just out of paper. It's kind of funny. Now, I know they're not making these anymore and I have to trade this one in. But it, what I thought was so funny is that in France, the, the driver's license or the old ones were valid forever. You get it once and you have your, your picture picture from when you're 18 when you're a senior it's kind of funny um, yeah. so I know I do need to trade that in and I still haven't figured out how or where I can do that but at least I've got a, yeah that's right somebody out there should know <laughs> let us know in the comments below <laughs> so I at least have a, a, a European everything. a European driver's license but we're gonna have to figure out what to do for Sarah we still haven't gotten you out to I'm even gonna have practice. to take the test my state Georgia and the US does not have a reciprocity agreement with Germany so lucky me I get to take a driver's license test so yeah. I'll have to do it just gonna have to yeah but when we got the car it was pretty exciting because like suddenly 
a whole new world opened yeah. for us. We did, yeah, we didn't realize. We immediately said, we can go and drive and see the mountains a little and go to yeah. a town that doesn't have a train station. And yes, uh, so yes. we did immediately go out and we go did. on a little trip. We took and, the kids uh, to a little trip and we went yeah. and got um, curry burgers <laughs> and a little stand. And yeah. it was really fun. So that was really cool. And the kids got very car sick. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thankfully, they didn't have any accidents in the car. Right. <laughs> the new car, but yeah. And uh, so the car is, you know, a reasonably big size car and I was, you know, the roads in Germany are smaller so it is, a, it does feel a little tighter. Um, but in general around here it's not so bad. Our town, yeah. our town isn't so big. But actually the, earlier this week we went to go visit a gymnasium, a, a, a mm -hmm. school for, for our kids. And it was in the neighboring town. It's a bigger town and we ended up going to a playground. And the streets were super narrow and I ended up having the parallel park and it's like you can't even fit two cars past each other. So, you know, having a bigger car, you know, is, is a little tricky and sometimes the roads are, are narrower around here. You don't have big wide open spaces, but we'll get used to it again. And I've seen that question come up a lot in like expats in Germany, Facebook groups and stuff and people asking what size car would fit here. And you definitely can have a bigger car. It's just that there's going to be some times where a parking garage might be too low or a street might be too narrow or a spot might be too small for you to park in. So, yeah. But I don't think it's going to be all the time. I mean, in a lot of the bigger cities too, there's lots of parking garages. There's yeah. more opportunities to park. So you'll probably be okay. So we're excited that we have a car now and we can start to explore a lot more of Germany, especially now that, like I said earlier, the hotels and restaurants look like they're opening up the end of May here. We're so happy about that. As I know, all of you Germans are very happy about that. So yeah, you're going to start to see more videos of the towns and places that we're going to travel to with our kids and uh, what that looks like. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, would love you, if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you like these kind of videos about life in Germany, definitely subscribe. And we hope to see you back here again soon. Drop us a comment below so we can get to know you better. All right, talk to you guys later. Cheers. Ciao.